Monan, the shipyard that can stretch its yachts, use moisturiser in their construction process, and have soundproofing that is so efficient that even a decibel meter can't detect the sound on board. Filming at this shipyard is always a fascinating experience. The last time I was here, we took a look all over the Monan 110. The time before, we showed her in construction, along with one of these, the 122-foot Monan Martinique. This time, we're going to go on a journey together, the incredibly personal journey of a yacht owner's experience at the shipyard from drawing board to delivery. To make any journey worthwhile though, it's good to know what's at the end of it. So sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let me tell you all about the Monon Martinique. There is nothing on the water quite like a Monon Martinique. The designer, Rene van der Velden has given her a very distinctive, very identifiable profile indeed. Understated in her elegance, this is not a yacht with wild, futuristic lines, balconies popping out of every bulwark, or spitting up a rooster tail from her transom. She is an exquisitely proportioned, magnificently manufactured, Dutch engineered, masterpiece that is recognized by the connoisseurs of the yachting world as being best in her class. Her 17 knots top speed is impressive. Her 4,000 nautical mile range at 10 knots, more than respectable. But her greatest accolades of all are the words of admiration from owners and crew who praise her build quality and develop a close relationship with the shipyard team. That and the fact that six of them have been sold since 2018. But if that is the result at Journey's End, where does it all start? Let's take a look at hull number seven of the series the next available model for sale, to consider the journey she will take and the impact that Nona can have upon her during the construction process. Simply put, hull number seven right now is just that, a hull. At the time of filming, she's been built by welding together hundreds of steel plates to form a tried and tested shape that has been proven to provide the desired performance and stability for guests on board. At the same time, in a separate facility, the superstructure is being built from aluminium, and the two will come together in the shipyard, where they shall be joined in marine matrimony, never to be parted. Now in the journey of a moment Martinique's life, there are certain things that cannot be changed, certain things that make it a Monan Martinique, rather than a different yacht altogether. The hull shape, of course, is one such thing, but so is the naval engineering, the specifications and position of the engines, watertight bulkheads, and other elements that are essential to the safety and performance of the vessel. The future owner of hull number seven can be given the steering wheel to take the project in one direction or another, but they can't take a couple of wheels off and call it a motorbike. At this point in time, much of the interior design has already been discussed by Monan themselves, so an owner who becomes a part of this project will be invited to choose marbles for the yacht and the exterior layout by February 2024. And that is how precise Monan are in their planning, February. Now, there are two points I want to make about that. The first is that any successful project results from a reasonable and constructive approach from all sides. If the yacht's construction has progressed up until here and decisions have been made about the interior design that you just can't live with, talk to the shipyard. It may be that it's not too late for them to take a few steps back and get it changed. However, if the yacht's journey has progressed all the way along to here, it would be unreasonable to expect the shipyard to go all the way back 
and to start again. And this is a point of fundamental importance to yacht buyers. The earlier you get involved with a project, the more you can steer it in the direction you want, the more impact you can have on personalizing the vessel to be built the way that you want it to be. The other point is that it may seem excessive to have to make design decisions more than one year before the delivery of the yacht, which in this case is scheduled for April 2025. That would probably be the case if we were talking about the design of a home, even of a luxury high-end home, but we're not. We're talking about a luxury yacht, and a Monan luxury yacht at that. One of the most amazing interiors I have ever seen on a yacht was on a Monan. She was called Sophia, and walking into her main salon was like entering an alabaster cave. The curves, shapes, and textures had been drawn up by Artline and executed by Monan in a remarkable masterclass in translating a designer's concept into a piece of functional art. In the Martinique yachts, they have continued to show incredible diversity in their designs. The first Martinique, Brigadoon, was actually sold to the owner of a design company who put his unique style on the interiors. Another one, Cocoon, almost looks like a different yacht with a strong Scandinavian influence. And the third hull, Botai, on the other hand, could have a video all to itself to recount the amazing materials employed to pull off this stunning look. All of this takes time. To illustrate just how much time, take a look at these Monan craftsmen fine sanding and polishing these unique panels that are destined to be fitted to the stairwell of one of the Martiniques in construction. It will take them days to perfect every panel, but they are just the last link of a very long chain. I was shown this never before seen rendering of the main deck salon of a Martinique. And as you can see, the designer included textured panels, this time appearing to depict waves. To me, they look like the kind of waves that you may see in a sand dune. A very unique image, plucked straight from the imagination of the designer. Straight from the imagination and onto the computer program of this man, Luke. He will use CAD programming to create each panel in three dimensions before making some test pieces on Monan's CNC cutting machine. And only when each panel is perfect will the final pieces be cut, painted, and then sanded and polished to perfection by the craftsmen that we saw earlier. Two things I want to say about that. First of all, the CNC cutting machine works on three axes, whilst the design work necessary relies upon five axes. So the amount of coding necessary to make this work is phenomenal. Luke actually told me that they're going to have to increase the RAM memory of their machine to cope with all the coding that is done. The other thing is, his colleagues tell me that he actually has built his own CNC cutting machine at his house. That is dedication for you. And that is the kind of thing that I only ever hear about at Monan. So, achieving something that is both beautiful and perfectly executed takes time. It takes time to conceive, it takes time to design, time to create, to perfect, and to fit. And the sooner you make a decision on interior design as an owner, the more feasible it is that the shipyard can satisfy you. Talking of fitting, I visited two Martinique yachts already close to the end of their journeys, and it was fascinating to see the differences in each one of them. 
On Monan 204, which is the sixth model in the Martinique range, there was a tremendous amount of activity going on board. The yacht was well into the outfitting stage. Remember that as wiring, plumbing and machinery is being fitted on board the vessel, in another facility, cabinetry, ceiling panels, wall panels and even stairwells are being built. Monan do all of this work in-house, so they do not have to rely upon subcontractors. The time comes when these need to be bought on board, checked for size, taken off and tweaked if necessary, and then finally installed. This is a tremendously busy time, as all kinds of craftsmen are coming together to see the final result of their work. Next to Monan 204 is Monan 203, the fifth hull in the series. And although they are only about 10 weeks apart in their timelines, you can really see the differences with 203 already showing finished cabinetry, with ceiling panels fitted and the final coat of paint applied to the superstructure. The differences don't end there though, since the owners of each yacht have steered their own personal journey down different paths. In the bathrooms I saw an elegant marble finish on one yacht, and this curious and inviting mother of pearl finish in another. This is not a material that you can find in a local store or online. This is the result of a designer with a clear idea of what they want, and a shipyard who are eager to find it or make it if necessary. Again, it takes time. The layouts of both yachts too have notable changes. In one yacht, the owner's stateroom bed faces forward and positions a walk-in closet inboard. On the other, it faces aft and places the closet to starboard. All of these changes need to be studied. Designs need to be drawn up then executive drawings. The cabinetry has to be built, fitted, tweaked, refitted. It takes a long time. And time is very much the theme of this video. If you want to know what makes Monan a quality yacht builder, we've filmed a video about that and I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. If you want to see a walkthrough tour of a finished Monan yacht, We've done that too on the Monan 110, and I'll put a link to that as well at the end of this video. Today though, we're talking about the opportunity of taking a journey hand in hand with a shipyard as they build another example of the most successful model in their history. Monan 205 is already in construction and Monan absolutely have the financial means necessary to complete the yacht with or without an owner. But what a shame it would be to miss out on the opportunity of joining Monan on such a personal and inspiring journey. The shipyard are accustomed to having to take a few steps back in order to rebuild the yacht the way that you want it, if it's feasible to do so. But every change that's made can impact the delivery time and the cost to the client, maybe to you. Far better to take the steering wheel early, choose the flooring that you want, the light fittings of your choice, paint the hull the colour of your Bentley, keep Luke busy designing and making custom three-dimensional wall panels, take your time and build your Monan exactly the way you want it.